Amid U.S. President Donald Trump's threats to annex Canada, the focus has turned to our water supply. BC's energy minister has said the province cannot use its water supply as a bargaining chip because of the Columbia River Treaty. So what exactly is the Columbia River Treaty? When Grand Coulee Dam opened in 1942, the dam quickly became the largest hydropower station in the world, kind of by accident. The dam was originally built as an irrigation project, and the power stations came in handy during World War II. But once everything was operational, they quickly realized that these power stations weren't nearly big enough. Measured at the U.S.-Canada border, they discovered that the Columbia could get as low as only 14,000 cubic feet per second during the dry season, followed by an astonishing half a million cubic feet per second during spring runoff. And so the thought process was that if you could get those two numbers closer together, you can make Grand Coulee and every other dam on the river into a much larger and more efficient producer of power which is what led to the Columbia River Treaty of 1961. The concept of the treaty is pretty straightforward. Canada would build three new large storage dams in the Rockies to hold back excess spring runoff and then release it gradually throughout the year. Canada would build Kinleyside Dam, the almost 800 foot tall Mica Dam, and the Duncan Dam with a whole lot of mountain storage. In exchange for building those three dams, Canada is entitled to 50% of the extra energy generated in the US. This is referred to in the treaty as the Canadian entitlement. Canada didn't actually need all that surplus electricity in the 60s and 70s, and so they immediately sold their Canadian entitlement back to the U.S. for cash to help pay for the building of those dams. This turned out to be a very good deal for both countries. Canada received the means to be able to modernize the river infrastructure and enough energy to last them for a very long time. The U.S. also benefited from all this increased power production, but also was able to spread out the load of flood control across a larger series of dams, which is a big reason why the Portland-Vancouver area hasn't experienced a truly catastrophic flood since 1948. The treaty was first signed in 1961 and requires either side to give 10 years notice if they want to opt out of the agreement completely. Now, the treaty doesn't really expire per se, but the cash for flood control agreement did go away in 2024, which means that for the last several years, the U.S. and Canadian governments have been at the table trying to negotiate a practical extension of the existing agreement. No one wants this treaty to go away. It's actually very favorable for both parties. In the last months of the Biden administration, the two sides came to a general understanding, a framework handshake deal of what was going to be ratified by both governments. But they never actually signed the extension. There's really no reason to panic right this second about negative consequences from this treaty getting delayed. It just means that changes to the agreement are on pause. And so the most likely scenario is that for now, things will continue to operate as they have in years past. But for the long-term security of energy and flood control in the Pacific Northwest, we need to get this agreement signed. There's really no upside to dragging this out for a moment longer.